Well, hello, YouTubers, on this cloudy but warm afternoon. Uh, where we left off last was on this Explorer. I am in the process of pulling out the transfer case. Um, I have a, a chain in that transfer case that's really sloppy, uh, really loose, and needs to be replaced when I go around a curve uh, in four-wheel drive or if you're on ice and snow. Sometimes you can hear that uh, front end. It sounds like it's clunking. You don't know where it's coming from. It's a banging, popping sound. Well, I explained that in my last video. Um, I'll watch I'll post a link in this video if you can't find it. Uh, the uh, chain is really bad on this transfer case. And I'm going to crawl up under here and show you what I've done so far. Now, I pulled the exhaust off, which is kind of sitting right there. Um, I've got some of the other things here taken off. And I'm just kind of crawl up under here real quick. Got the cross member off. It's uh, actually laying inside back in the garage there and uh let's see <laughs> let me go up under here kind of wet and muddy so i'm kind of trying to keep things nice and dry um there is a transfer case i've got it hanging down there i've got a little jack under the transmission and uh it's pretty easy to take out once you get past the exhaust and the uh cross member of course i've had it off a couple of times so <laughs> The bolts come off fairly easy, but if you never had yours off, that's a different story altogether. Uh, here is the back of the transfer case. And uh, I think you can see that there. It's a pretty big transfer case, but I should be able to drop it down out of there. And to put it back up in there, I have a transmission jack. You can, pr If you're really strong, you can probably lift this transfer case up yourself. It weighs about 75 to 80 pounds, but it will... Uh, uh, come out. Let me uh, switch back around. All I have to do right now is go ahead and take this drive shaft off, and I've got these uh, 15 millimeter bolts I got to take out there. And there's a couple on the top. And this whole unit will just kind of slide back. I'd set the camera up and let you watch me take it out, but I don't have a uh, hard drive yet on my main computer. I'm shooting this on my cell phone, and I just wanted to give you guys. A little uh, hope and encouragement if you have to take your transfer case out, out out of your Explorer. It's not too bad of a job. I've seen guys take these out with the cross member still in here. But the problem is uh, that cross member is right below these bolts where you got to unbolt on the transfer case. So uh, just kind of be aware of that. And uh, once we get this out of here, then we can separate this and go in here and replace the chain. The chain hasn't come yet. Uh, the mailman hasn't come by yet so it should be here later today but i figured i'd just go ahead and take this out now and show you what i've done so i'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of here and we'll take a look at it real quick and uh we'll take it apart oh i know what one other thing here we'll, we'll do real quick i wanted to show you just how much play and slop this thing has there's the back of the transfer case listen to this It's got a lot of slop and play in it. I'll do that. I'll do that same thing to the front drive shaft here, and it, you can hear it even worse up here. It's just should not be able to turn it like that. So we'll go ahead and pull this out of here, and we'll split it apart, and we'll take a look at the new time, uh, the ch new chain and slip it back together, put it back together. All right, there's a look at it. And after about, oh, I don't know, maybe two and a half hours after taking everything out, you don't have to do everything I did, but I have some other things I need to do under here. But there's a look at the transfer case. And uh, these bolts, um, they put thread locker on them, on them at the factory. So do yourself a favor. Don't even try to break loose these uh, with a quarter inch drive. Use a big old half inch, especially on the top where you can get in there like this. Because if you use a quarter inch, it'll just slip off and it's gonna your your socket's gonna go flying everywhere. Use something nice and sturdy, and uh, it takes a while to get these off, but they will come off. But they, they do put thread locker on there from the factory. And there's a look at the transfer case, the back of it, and this is what I'll be taking apart <coughs> here in a little bit. And hopefully taking care of this noise that's uh, happening inside. And there's a look up underneath. Lots of room under here when that thing's out of here. So uh, 
I guess I'll go ahead and we'll start pulling this transfer case apart and looking at it. Okay, so the transfer case is out, so bear with me. I'm going to show you how to pull this one apart. Now, this is a uh, 44 one, one. I've taken out most of the bolts. I want to show you the tag real quick. Let's see if I can find it there at the top. If the camera focuses there. 4411. This is a 2004 model, actually. So, um, so once you get all your get the camera focus, all your bolts out here. These are T40 star bits. Take the, all these out, and they're all around the case. Next thing you want to do up here on the top. You're going to have to cut this wire off. This is the uh, signal wire that goes into the big magnet for the uh, four-wheel drive or when it's slipping so it engages the clutches. Just cut that. Stupid design. I don't know why Ford did it. I leave my transfer case motor up here, the selector, on. Then take a 30 millimeter big socket like this. And I have an impact wrench. Heat this nut up a little bit and this should come off like that. And just take a hammer and tap your flange and knock it off. Now before I pulled my flange off here, I made a small mark right there and another one. Let me pull this off. Right there, I don't know if you can see that where my finger is, but I made a couple of marks just so I know how to orientate the uh, flange. Then the last thing you have to do, there's three bolts right here you have to take out, little nuts, pop these off. And now we're ready to pull this top half off, and we'll try to do this with one hand and holding the camera in the other. Sometimes I'm successful, and sometimes I'm not. And here we go. And that'll come off. Make sure your seal's okay. Put this off to the side, and there is our entire unit. And I want to show you how loose this chain is. Even if I put slack, pull all the slack out of it, hold this back which I'm probably not going to be able to. There we go. Still, look at all this slack. It's banging around. It's actually trying to jump off these gears, I would suspect. So uh, that's why we're tearing it apart. Then the next thing, really, all you have to do is go ahead and maybe unhook this oil sump pump. Pull that off there. And uh, then lift this whole unit off and take the chain out. Uh, I'll probably have to do it with two hands. Let me see if I can... All right, well, maybe I can do it with one hand then. Okay, so slip this chain off. Pretty simple design. And there is our chain. And I can bend it. It's uh, up and down. It's pretty loose. So when the other one gets here, we'll compare it. And then this is why we got to disconnect that wire because there's a magnet right here. And we'll just pull this up out of the way for now. Lay it off the side. And this is where your clutches are. There's a magnet right here. And what it does, it, it squishes these clutches. And that's what gives your uh, four-wheel drive what turns the front wheel. And here is your selector rod. Just kind of sitting in there when you uh, hit the button on the dash. This will spin a little bit. And this here will move this gear up and down a little bit like this. Takes it in and out for wheel drive. So we'll take this rod out. And just make little notes how everything goes back in. And clean it up. And that's basically it. And this is how you put your chain in. Uh, I, really, I don't have any real reason to go any further. This down here is okay. I checked everything. It seems to be okay. There's just some gears and some bearings. But this spins freely. Feels really good. And a lot of got a lot of times you, they have trouble with these. These here will wear out. And when you try to put it in and out of four wheel drive, uh, these little let me get this back in here real, real quick. These little plastic tabs right here, they wear down so much. Uh, when this thing moves back and forth, there's so much play in it. It doesn't allow this to go up and down to engage it in and out four wheel drive. That's why a lot of people either get stuck in four wheel drive and won't come out or uh, they, it won't come out at all but that's how this works it kind of sits on there like that and it lifts that up and down like that so in a nutshell that's it so i'll go wait for a mailman to come and put the other chain on there and see how that works out hopefully uh this will help you out so uh that's basically how you take that apart all right so our new chain came this is the old one i just took off and uh 
It's got some places in it that's worn down, and I went on ahead and stuck the new one on here. You can see it's shiny, a little bit of a difference there. And it doesn't seem like it has this, the play in it that it had earlier. So now you can see I can, the chain seems to like a lot, it's a lot tighter. But other than that, uh, I'm ready to go ahead and put this back together. Pretty simple. Just pull both of these gears up, up the same time and slip the chain on. And use your both hands to kind of guide everything straight down. Pretty easy to do. I just can't do it with the camera here in my hand. But it is on. And uh, I guess for now, um, there's not much more I can do with this video. Uh, what I'll do is go ahead and put all this back together. Get it on the Explorer and take it out and i'll give you guys a final update here in a couple of days on uh, how this goes it'll probably be a day or so before i can finish this up but uh it is on and i paid 80 79 i think for it for the chain free shipping and everything so um we'll see if that takes care of the clunking but uh the old chain it doesn't look like it's really all that bad but i guess it's the stretching that uh, causes the issues uh, but when I measured them I couldn't find that much difference but who knows maybe these links here on this old one was worn down quite a bit but the links on this one here looks like they're a lot thicker so I don't know so other than that that's it I'm gonna go ahead and put this together and I'll see you guys back here in a few days with final update and let you know if this took care of the issue so uh, until my next video see you guys in <laughs>